Yo guys, Ice Cool Tech here back with a brand new video. Now before we get into this video guys, definitely keep an eye out for Wednesday's video guys. It's going to be pretty cool so stay tuned for that. Also, before we get into the video guys, definitely leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more guys. Every subscriber means a ton and it's really appreciated. So without further ado, let's just get right into this video guys. So I'm sorry this video is a little late but a lot has actually happened the past few days. So was planned for Monday is now coming today but it is here. So iPhone 7 4 review on iOS 13 developer beta 6. All right, so over the past few days, you know, I've been experimenting with iOS 13 developer beta 6 on my iPhone 7, and I do want to start off with battery because I noticed that battery life has been greatly improved for me in beta 6 versus beta 5. Um, and my max capacity, for those of you that are wondering, is 100%, so getting the best here out of it. Um, but yes, battery life has been pretty good. I'm getting around 40 to 45 percent at the end of the day with average use. So that is phenomenal, guys, especially compared to beta 5, where I, I was seeing around 30, 35 range at the end of the day. So that is awesome to hear. Also, performance wise. So after right after I updated to beta 4, I noticed that there were a lot of it just seemed a lot smoother. The animations were a lot smoother, the, just everything, honestly. There was not one thing that I have had a complaint about. Um, and I noticed throughout the days of using this, actually a week now, it's been great. It's just held up so well. Apps slowed up definitely faster. It's definitely an improvement. And, you know, everything's really good. So I have nothing to complain about on beta 6 with performance, it's just held up amazing, definitely a lot better than iOS 13 developer beta 5, and if you guys want to see my Geekbench scores, as you guys can see, iOS 13 beta 6, I had a single core of 3519, a multi-core of 6032, and that is actually above average, the average is 3410 versus my 3519, and multi-core is actually over 6000 when it's usually in the 5000s, so that is pretty awesome, guys. Um, Definitely performance increases, guys, so I'm all for that. Also, now we're going to talk about 3D Touch, because I do want to touch on that. It's a terrible, terrible joke. Anyway, um, but a lot of the iOS 12 mechanics for 3D Touch were actually brought back in iOS 13 de developer beta 6, and it's pretty nice. So we have more of this the force touch that we did back in 3D or back in 3D touch um back in iOS 12 than the previous betas however you know you can still long press and get the haptic touch which is still slower than a force touch it's a lot faster than you know just long pressing um and I do definitely appreciate that you know every everywhere that there's 3D touch you have the option to force touch or just long press so you know it's, I, I don't really like that, but I'm not going to complain about it. You know, there's no reason to. It's not annoying or anything. It's just there. Uh, the only issue I do have with it is it just doesn't give me, you know, that 3D touch, the original 3D touch feel anymore. Um, but, you know, of course, it, the long, the haptic touch, as they call it, is still good for, like, the iPhone XR and iPod Touches and iPads and the iPhone SE. So, you know, you have it. There you go. Um, other than that, they did... The, the, the box here, you can actually, like, do this now. You know, my habit that I was saying. Am I, yeah, okay, you, you guys know. Um, but it doesn't actually do go into the rearrange apps mode until you swipe out of the box now. Instead of how it was previously, when you were still in the middle of the box, it would start getting smaller right around the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth toggles, and battery and rearrange apps, and it would start getting smaller then you go into jiggle mode. However, now it's just when you get out of the box. So I actually really like that. It's a lot more stable and just feels definitely, it just feels better. Also, as you guys could see there, um, when you go out of the, you know, the box to jiggle mode, it actually, the app icon stays there. I know in beta five, it would disappear. It was like the weirdest thing. It would just disappear. Um, but that has been fixed. The app icon is still there. So that also gives it a more, you know, stable feel and look. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Also, I have still been noticing a couple bugs, such as that slight ping noise that you guys can't hear on camera. This is, it's a lot less frequent now, um, it, that it doesn't happen, 
most of the time that ping noise is there and that's how it should be. In beta 5, there was like half of the time it was there, half of the time it wasn't, but in beta 6, it's like 95% of the time it is there. Um, so definitely that's a lot better. Uh, and, you know, there's that still that bug that I can't replicate for some reason. So if we go on Safari, for example, and, you know, go into horizontal, or hold the phone horizontally and increase the volume or the ringer in my case, there's, there was this bug previously where, and it still happens in beta six, I've noticed that when I'm in horizontal, like holding the phone horizontally in a game or in an app or whatever, the, if you swipe down from where the top of the screen it would be, it actually brings you to your notification center in a vertical state. And same thing with the control center, as you can see, it's not doing it now. Um, but before it actually would, it still does in beta six. Like I said, I can't replicate it, but it does happen here and there. It's not that, an oh no, actually it gets pretty annoying when you need the control center or notification center in an app. It just, it's completely annoying. It still happens in beta 6, just like it happened in beta 5. Um, I hope I can get, or Apple can fix this in beta 7. It, you know, for now, I'm not going to complain about it too much. We're only in the 6th beta, so we still got a few more, or plenty more to go that this could be fixed in. So, uh, anyway... So yeah, overall, Beta 7 has been phenomenal. Battery life, performance, and 3D Touch. I'm actually really happy with where 3D Touch is headed right now in, in iOS 13, especially with the way it started. Uh, however, I do want to mention that I know I'm definitely going to be downgrading to iOS 12.4 or whatever the latest iOS 12 version is. By then, it might be 12.4.1. I'll be definitely be downgrading on iOS 13 releases for the public after I do my iPhone 7 review on the full release because I just want the old 3D Touch. I'm really, I kind of miss being able to hold it and put a slight amount of pressure on it so it comes up a little bit but doesn't come up all the way. It just kind of, it's a really force touch feel and I do miss that and I really did like it. So I'll definitely be downgrading back to 12 when 13 comes out for everybody in September, but that's just me personally. Other than that, iOS 13, beta six especially has been phenomenal majority of the bugs have been fixed so far that were in the previous betas, especially beta 1. I mean, look at how far we've come from beta 1. And I, again, I'm really liking the direction that this is going. So Apple, keep improving iOS 13. It's looking good. Uh, anyway, guys, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Also, by the way, before I go, do remember to like, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you guys are interested, like I said in my last video, you can always join my Discord, guys, just to, you know, hang out or whatever. Uh, link will be in the pinned comment below. So anyway, see you guys. Peace out.